So welcome Strategy Battle Gamers to Nigeria, it's your YouTube video, you're here with host you Richard Damien and this is episode 3 of uh, the Two Time Zones. Um, this is our new series on our channel and on Blackfire Productions channel. Um, that is basically a conversation between myself and Taylor Sinstat of Blackfire Productions and we'll be putting these uh, videos up fairly regularly, hopefully one a week each at least. And um, we're just basically having a having a chat and having a conversation while we paint. And the idea is basically to um, convince ourselves to get a bit of hobby time, sit down and paint, and perhaps to um, help some other people. So uh, the plan is these videos will be 25 to 30 minutes long. Um, crack your paints out, and hopefully they'll kind of motivate you to just find that little half an hour of hobby time, even if you don't get any more every week, and um, join in the conversation in the various comments and so on and so forth. And so that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to crack on. Um, I am currently working on, and you see that, it's the uh, captain from the Iron Hills chariot. I've got my whole um, chariot laid out in front of me here. This is what I've been uh, working on recently. I'm doing one of my um, hobby vlogs, uh, my unboxing tactics, big whoop de doo uh, hobby vlogs for this chariot. So I'm not showing off too much on other hobby vlogs, but I have been uh, quietly getting on with it. And uh, it's getting right, the painting process has begun. So, um, thank you to everyone who got involved in the last episode and in Taylor's episode over on uh, uh, Blackfire Productions. We obviously, I haven't really uh, had a chance to say anything since that first episode, but it seems to have gone down really well. People like the idea and are very positive and putting lots of nice comments uh, down below and getting involved which is great to see. Um, I noticed that some, I don't know if they'll be watching this but I believe there were also some non-nerds watching this. Uh, two of my friends I think uh, from home, Julie and Tom, for some reason managed to uh, find themselves watching one of these videos so if you guys are watching this, uh, welcome, lovely to see you. Uh, they, Julie was pleasantly bemused by why anyone on earth would want to essentially watch me talk while I paint and the only thing I can say to that is I entirely agree. I don't know why anyone would uh, watch it but we all kind of do don't we? We like, I guess we like seeing what, seeing other people do the things we like doing. I think I think that's the simplest way of putting it. So yeah, the uh, this segment seems to have gone well so uh, cheers to everyone who's got involved and cheers to Taylor for doing his um, part. Um, the second episode went really well, I really enjoyed that, so he got the conversation going. It's nice to see some other people have been uh, kind of I don't know, inspired or encouraged or getting involved as well. I know um, uh, Ben, uh, who you might have seen on the um, on the Jewish Hill of this channel, um, doing some stuff with James, has done his first hobby vlog, uh, first ever hobby vlog, and his YouTube channel is uh, Benji B S B G. And he um, he's done a he's done a great video, very similar to this while he's painting, and basically said that it was this uh, this series that has inspired him to do this and to take the plunge into YouTube and to kind of get involved. So um, make sure you go over and pop over to his um to his YouTube channel and give that video a watch. It's a uh, very similar sort of thing to this. So if you uh, need something else to paint along to, that's really good. Uh, he's he's got a great little um little video there about um getting back into the hobby after a few years out and rebasing re his Uruk High and his uh, Gondor stuff. I was really pleased to see a bit of love for uh, Uruk High on there and he was putting uh, I noticed he was putting his uh, Gondor stuff on Matt Davis's generation shift bases that they seem to get around everywhere don't they? And so Ben my question for you, I couldn't help noticing in the back you seem to have some giant geranium. Um, what's in it? Uh, is it lizards? Is it spiders? Is it shelob? Um, we've got a no man, what's, what's, what's in the case at the back? Um, or maybe it's an attractive bookcase and I've got entirely confused. Who knows? Um, so yeah, I also said that the uh, My Little Milk Bottle Top idea was um, was quite helpful, which is the, uh, particularly when I'm painting bases, but also um, sometimes when I'm painting models. Uh, oh, I've got an example here actually. <laughs> um, I'll put the My Milk Bottle Top like that. To, um, to hold a blue tag to a milk bottle um, top and then it gives you something to hold and uh, he was doing the same thing which was lovely to see so uh, I'm glad that's been helpful to me and um, keep producing the video so it was really good to see you uh, kind of getting involved 
with with that and kind of responding gives me something else to watch when I'm doing my hobby as well. So um, this week to me, uh, for me, hasn't been great, if I'm honest. I haven't done an awful lot of hobbying. Um, I, d I think this is the first time I've picked up a brush since Monday, I guess, and it's currently uh, it's Sunday evening as I'm, as I'm recording this. So um, not particularly great, but um, hopefully I might have a bit more time uh, this week in the evenings and stuff. Now that the chariot's done, I'm quite excited about getting a bit more paint on it and hopefully getting it together. Uh, it's coming along alright. I might be doing a bit of dry brushing in a minute if I get through this metal. Currently putting all the uh, lead belcher on the plate metal of the five crew members. Um, so that's been cool. Um, I'll following up on Taylor's video. Uh, you've been to Don Barnett, lovely, lovely Don uh, over in Canada. I've been to his event, the um, Scouring of the Shire. I think he got no second breakfast. That was it. It was called second breakfast. Hobbit second breakfast, wasn't it? And. Uh, a kind of fun, friendly game event, and I also um, I looked awesome. And I watched uh, Don's hobby vlog about that, about the um, the event he ran there, and that is over on the Ontario Strategy Battle Game League YouTube page. And I didn't actually know those guys had a YouTube um, page. I obviously knew the league and they had a Facebook page. But I didn't realise they had a um, YouTube channel. So I popped over there, and there's um, there's some really cool content on there. Um, obviously, Don's got this uh, series. Uh, is it Old Barney's? He's got Old Barney's Hobby Handiwork, and there's six episodes up of that. But the last one of those was his hobby vlog of this event he ran um, in the build up to it. Uh, Taylor was painting some ruffians in the last video, and he was painting them. Um, was it the last video? Maybe it was the video before that. Maybe it was the first one of the pilot episode. And uh, he was painting them up for that event, and uh, yeah, Don's got a really cool hobby vlog about. Uh, painting all the models for it while he's on his holidays and then um, actually going along to it and running it, it looked really cool and he did the Scouring of the Shire scenarios from the old source book alongside running a uh, Middle Earth Deadliest Warband tournament which um, some of you may remember from on this channel I think it was, um, I think it was, was it Jamie's idea? I think it was Jamie Gibbons idea and basically the idea was that you had a set number of points and you just build one warband and then you kind of have a tournament and duke it out and then uh, as well as doing the video series on here um, a few years ago um, Jamie also ran it at an event uh, up at Warhammer World one evening like when, when they were doing one of their GTs or something just on a Friday evening I think he ran a kind of uh, friendly one and I entered it with my, uh, I think I just had all Berserkers I think I just went, I don't know, it was like a Nora Captain with a shield and then just loads of Berserkers and uh, I I fell, I lost to a, I can't remember who it was now, um, but it was a Harad army, I think. It's like loads of um, Watchers of Connor and then loads of um, fat guys. Um, t t saw uh, saw my, my poor berserkers off, which was very sad. Um, but, uh, yeah, so he ran that as well, and the winner of that was actually a friend of Andrew's. It was uh, Andrew, sorry, a friend of Taylor's, Andrew Barbazan, I think his name is. I don't believe I've met. But he won, uh, I think Taylor was asking what he'd won with and he put it in a comment that his uh, his warband was a Dwarf Captain uh, with shield, four Khazar Guard, four Iron Guard and two Vault Warden teams. So uh, that was the deadliest warband in Ontario, which saw off all sorts of other things. It looked like there's some really cool ones in there. There's a, there's a Rivendell Knight uh, warband, six Rivendell Knights with a Captain, I think, which... Uh, which looks quite tasty. Uh, I think there was a six model limit if you were mounted. Um, in their rules. I'm, I'm not sure what their rules were or what their point value was or anything like that, but um, it looked like a cool little event, so well done to Don. So, um, yeah, be sure to go over and check out Ontario Strat Strategy Battle Game League OSBGL YouTube channel, because I've, I've watched a few um, I watched a few videos on there um, over the last couple of nights, and um, there's some really good content on there. Another great video on there was their journey vlog of the scouring of the West Farthing tournament, which was the, uh, I think we talked about it in the last two videos, the event run over in Canada by um, Jason and George of the OHA, um, which is Ontario Hobby Adventures. So again, we plugged them before, but make sure you go over and um, check those guys out. And they're doing really cool stuff on YouTube. Um, friendly, um, a kind of bunch of gamers putting friendly, fun, thematic gaming at the forefront. So. Um, Go and check them out, and they've just had their 
I believe it's their groups, the Ontario Hobbit Adventures groups first ever event, which was the Scary West Valley. I was talking about it in my first video about how despite the fact it's in Canada I kind of wanted to go to it. And um, yeah, it's now happened and they did some really great content. So I have followed the Ontario Hobbit Adventures guys little vlogs about it, including a very, very funny one uh, late at night when they've all had a bit to drink, I think it's fair to say. And they're, um, they're just eating cupcakes and kind of showing off the real community spirit side of things which I think is really really important and uh, that looks really really good fun and as well as them uh, doing their own hobby vlogs and promoting their own kind of event the uh, Ontario guys, the Ontario Strategy Power Game League guys have done a journey vlog for it um, it's only about 20 minutes long but I think that was, that was Don who uh, who has kind of orchestrated that but it's a really cool little vlog where he um, he takes you from his workplace on the, I think it's a Friday afternoon and basically drives to uh, somewhere else in Canada, Chatham is it? Something like that, Chatham, something like that I think I was saying and um, and then shows around the hotel and um, little clips of the games and stuff and all the boards and all oh, the boards, I don't think I'd um, I don't think the pictures have gone up when I recorded the episode one of this had they but the the boards those guys have at the OHA are just incredible. I'm, I'm sure a lot of you have seen um, the Rivendell board. It's by George, OHA George. Uh, it's just absolutely staggering. Make it, it makes a really good balance of um, of uh, looking like Rivendell but being playable uh, with some nice big areas, which is uh, quite tricky. So if you haven't seen that pop over to the Ontario Hobbit Adventures uh, YouTube channel and check out the uh, various videos I've got on there because it looks really, really good. So it was, uh, by all accounts, I believe it was a great event. Uh, I, think it's gone, I think it's gone really well for the guys, which is awesome. So well done to Jason and George. And is it, is it Tyler, I think, the new guy? Sorry about that, if I've, if I've got that wrong. Uh, they've just indoctrinated him into, a, uh, into the OHA. Got the next official member, which is quite cool. Um, but yeah, well done, guys. It looks like a really great event, and hopefully, uh, one day we'll be able to get out to Canada and uh, make it to some some OHA or OSBGL event of some sort. Because I'd really like to really like to come out there. So there we go. Um, <laughs> there was a few. There's a few good digs in some of the OHA stuff about uh, how the Canadian lifts have got two doors in them. Sorry, the Canadian elevators, you said, haven't you? Got two doors in them uh, instead of one, which we have in Britain. And, um, yeah, I, th I think most of our lifts, because they are lifts, um, have got one door. But occasionally, occasionally we treat ourselves to a two-door elevator. I've got to be honest, two doors in the elevator, that seems like a waste of doors. I think um, while you guys are putting two doors in the elevator, we're putting that spare door in another elevator, making more elevators, more efficient use of elevator doors there. So, um, yeah, I think that probably hopefully explains that one, puts that one to bed. Um, but yeah, it looks like, um, looks like you guys have done a great event and hopefully, uh, hopefully you'll run many more in the future. Um, I think the next one that's going on over there is uh, Taylor's event, uh, is it called The Great River? And you are using the Throne of Skulls army bonuses, um, I see, which is very, very cool. And I wanted to um, pick up on something that was in, uh, I saw on a Facebook thread as well, which is that um, I think you had mentioned that the, uh, you didn't think the, so basically for anyone who doesn't know, um, the uh, Throne of Skulls is a tournament in the UK and it was run recently at Warhammer World. And at that, the Middle Earth team released a bunch of army bonuses um, for Lord of the Rings armies. So kind of like the ones you get in the There and Back Again supplement for the Hobbit armies. There was uh, army bonuses for the Lord of the Rings armies. And um, they were basically trial rules, experimental rules to be used at this event. And alternate army lists. And um, it was really good fun. It was to encourage people to take themed armies. And Taylor's using them at his. And the question was... Um, if you take like Gandalf the White as in the Minas Tirith list, can he lead the troops? And the answer is yes. So if you take one of those lists from the, the well, this is certainly how the unofficial rules of Throne of Skulls worked, from those events, then yes, any hero in those lists um, 
essentially those those heroes kind of move there, I guess you could think about it, um, from wherever they normally are. Um, so Gandalf the White is exactly the same Gandalf the White profile you get in the Free Peoples book, but he's just in the Minas Tirith list, so he can lead them. Obviously, if he was an independent hero, he wouldn't be able to. So um, that's, that's the kind of thing. And similarly, you have the reverse trade-off, which if the hero isn't in there, then they can't. So isn't in Rohan? I feel like in the Rohan list, you don't have Knight of the Pelena, is that right? You only have Marshal of the Rizomark, which means if you want the Rohan bonus, um, which is plus one to charge on the turn you... Plus one to charge, plus one strength, I think, on the turn you charge. It's something like that, isn't it? Um, then um, you can't take Knight of the Pelena. So it's that kind of thing. So it's basically just to encourage you to use exactly those eyes, but yes, those heroes can lead warriors from those lists if you uh, want them to, which is very, very cool. Um, and it makes really nice thematic armies. At Throne of Skulls, uh, you, might, you might know this if you've watched our um, review on the plans here, but At Throne of Skulls, I played two all Matted Rohan armies, and they were really good. It works really well, really effective. They were both led by Theoden as the leader, which is cool made a really really effective um, use of that rule so yeah hopefully uh, good luck with that um, at your event and I hope it, hope it works out well. Um, something else that Taylor picked up on in his last video was a question of mine about the kind of distance you guys travel and it was really cool seeing in your uh, in the um, Ontario Guys Journey vlog there was references to this about how far you were travelling and stuff so thanks for uh, feeding back on that but apparently um, I think you said like 95% of you guys are within about three and four hours of each other. I think it was something like 70% of you were within an hour. And um, This is in Canada, obviously. And 25% uh, of you were in um, within three or four hours or something like that. So yeah, I guess it works out that there's about 95% um, of you within three or four hours and then the, the last 5% are that much further out. So that's, um, that's cool to know. And that's, that is about, you know, the, the distance, as I said, that three or four hour gap that personally I would be wanting to travel to an event as a, as a kind of maximum and <laughs> it was nice to see you actually uh, I was actually picked up on in the journey vlog of saying that the distance to um, the OHA event was about the same Don I think Don had looked it on a map so I appreciate this and worked out that it was about the same as between London and Manchester over here and that was it seemed to be for you guys a big trip like a fairly like not par for the course one, so um, and I think that's pretty similar to us. So we will travel for like four hours, you know, something like that, three four hours. But that's about that's about as far as I would go, generally speaking, unless it's a very uh, special event. We just had over here the scouring of Stirlingshire, which is in um, Scotland, which I did make it up to once. Um, a few years ago, great event, and uh, our very own GBHL Jamie won it, so congrats on that mate, uh, that, we heard that news this afternoon, um, but that, you know, <laughs> that would be a huge, huge drive for me, that would be about a, just trying to think, probably something like a six, seven hour drive or something like that, so you, that's a real, there's no way I could do that on a normal normal kind of time I'd have to book a couple of extra days off and kind of go up on the Thursday and come back on the Monday or something to make it worthwhile but um, yeah that's as far I believe that's the furthest north tournament we have um, but congrats to Jamie uh, for bringing it home for the GHL that's awesome stuff and um, it's kind of interesting thinking about the differences I think between the uh, travelling of our uh, of our two communities um, I also mentioned that I think you you said I don't want to misquote you here that the the OHS OSBGL league is about the same size, and the same number of guys, and I I honestly don't know that um like what your numbers are and stuff, but I'd suspect we have probably slightly more in total. Like we've got on the Facebook page, there's what is it, three thousand people? Is that right? Something like that. I think I've got Facebook open. Feels like things I should know as an admin of this group. So look, Great British Hobbit League. Great British Hobbit League. Three thousand eight hundred and sixty-three members, so nearly four thousand. 
but that is um, that's obviously not active members of our league. You know that I think it's fair to say the GBHL page has become a kind of international hub for the hobby, like, and far more than simply our league page, if that makes sense. And it's hard to quite put a figure on how many people are in it. But to give you some idea, we have a look at our little league standings this year. It looks like this is all very unblue petery. Um, this is very much something I should have prepared earlier. It's taken a while to load for some reason. Internet's been playing up like anything here in the last couple of nights. Need to get onto something about that. Well, uh, here we go. Outriders bring news. Do -do. And the 2017 standings. There we go. I've got no idea where I am in the league. You know. It's be fun to find out. <laughs> I haven't cared about such things since 2014. Right, let's have a look. What's going on here? Um, I'm 19th. Who knew? So as I scroll down here, I scroll down here, there are, there, oh no, oh there's lots of people. So many people. Are you all this year? This isn't what I was expecting at all. This can't be right. Can it? Well, ever. These are going to be such such fun facts. Hey, this can't be right, can it? <laughs> this is going to end up being far more people. I think possibly, in a very surprising twist, um, if you took if you're looking at ever, there have been um, five hundred and thirty-two players in the GBHL. That's across all the years, which is quite a lot, no? So. Um, that's that's in you know total players that have ever played in one of our events. Now, if we go and look at who's got points this year, it's significantly less. Oh, there we go. It is 283. So we've had 283 players this year attend one or more events, which is um, which is quite cool. So that gives you some idea, I guess, of of the actual league numbers, I suppose. Um, but even that, I think, is quite misleading. You know, we don't have 283 people regularly going to our events. Um, you know, it's, it's it's really hard to put a finger on that because it's it's uh, it depends on your definition of regularly, I suppose. But um, if I scroll up a bit more now, and maybe start to see, is there a total tournaments number of tournaments? Um, that'll be this figure. So people who have gone to more than one tournament, should we say, um, is somewhere in the region of 123, something like that. Maybe 150. About 150 people this year have attended more than one GBHL tournament, which is quite a lot. So uh, that is the answer to the question no one asked. I wonder how many people turned off during that fascinating segment. Um, that gives you some idea of how... Uh, active our league is. How does that compare to the Canadian one? I would be genuinely very curious to hear. Um, yes, that's our league. Um, you were saying that most of your events are single day events as well, which is very much the opposite here now. Um, we have very, very, very few single day tournaments. Uh, single day tournaments now tend to be run by um, kind of smaller clubs and societies and aren't necessarily league counting. It's, it's certainly not a prerequisite that it has to be a two day but the vast majority of our events are um, our two day ones, even the kind of 80 point fun events are uh, generally two days now, which is, uh, is really, really good for the social aspect of things. But it does, you know, it does drive the cost up, of course. Like, you know, the tickets are more expensive, you generally have accommodation to consider, that sort of thing. Um, but that's definitely the way our leagues moved, I think, in the last few years towards two day events. So I think it's good because I like. Yeah, it's good to it's good to go away. I think and um, unwind and relax for the weekend. Have a bit of gaming. I'd rather do 
one two day event every month than two no hang on one two day event every two months and two one day event every month I think um, personally uh, but that's just me not necessarily everyone um, who knows but uh, it looks like you guys had a great time when you went away it's a Jason's event so maybe you'll see more of those cropping up in your league in the future um, it's a really cool way of like working on the social aspect and that sort of stuff which I think is very very important as well you know um, you wish us luck for Jamie's doubles tournament Stockport in Flames which is coming up in a couple of weeks now and I believe I was rambling about whether or not I'd take the Iron Hills Chariot or the kind of Gundabad Monster Mash and the overwhelming response was to take the Monster Mash and whilst I would agree with you and that was almost certainly what we were going to do I actually got a bit of an exclusive which is that me and Tom had a chat the other week when we were filming the planter and we're going to do something very different we are going to be taking the Necromancer and the Nazgul um, we were just, I can't remember why we were talking about it but we um, just started saying that it occurred to us that anyone who's read our the magazine we do, SPG magazine will remember in issue 3 Matt Davis sculpted us these incredible uh, Nazgul of Dol Guldor um, based on the based on the Battle of Five Armies, just incredible models, and Dave Fredericks sculpted of Shadow of Flame fame, sculpted us the Necromancer, and it was painted by Kev Spector, and they're gorgeous, gorgeous models, um, we really, really like them, and we just realised we've never used them, we used them for the battle report, obviously, uh, when they were first done, and had all the photos taken, and they've actually been used by other people, I think, who was it, Kieran, Kieran Street, and whoever he was partnered with at Seven Stones was it? I can't remember who he was with um, Larry was it? maybe it was Larry, I can't remember no, Larry was Rivendell, I don't know Kieran and his partner um, used uh, the used them for that and then Dan Entwistle took them out to um, Nova this year uh, to use them in those tournaments so they've been used they've been used on the table but we realised we haven't used them and we suddenly thought it's a doubles tournament it's like me and Tom teaming up uh, which doesn't happen an awful lot because uh, I don't really like him and we thought um, well why don't we take the SBG it's team SBG why don't we take the SBG army with us and so that's what we're going to do um, we are taking because uh, it's 450 points so it's 900 points we're taking the Necromancer 8 of the Wraiths and then 2 Mirkwood Spiders uh, Mirkwood Spiders were also converted for that magazine by Mr Steve Crow uh, they look fantastic that's going to be our really cool themed Dull Gordor army, which I am proper excited about. Because uh, that's a, you know, the reason we devoted two issues of the magazine to it is it's a part of the films that I absolutely love. I really, really enjoy that whole sequence. I think the um, I think the the production team did Dull Gordor so well in the film. I really, really enjoy it. And so um, yeah, that's going to be our army for Stockport and Flames, which I am very very excited about um, so yes uh, less models it's also probably more competitive and it's not what we it's not what we want we're not going to try and win it but um, I, I think that army is very very competitive personally um, I haven't used it so it probably won't be when we do it because we won't have practice but I think in the right hands the necromancer and all those new Nazgul could be absolutely terrifying so I think it'd be good fun I think it'd be good fun to use and kind of Try and figure out what uh, what tips and tricks and things you can do with all those wraiths, particularly the teleporty ones, because I think they could be really, really good on the tabletop. So yeah, I'm quite excited about that. So something else I wanted to pick up on is that Taylor mentioned tea time. I think he was talking about the time differences, and he was saying how um, we'd be having our tea by the time uh, by the time as he was recording it and that sort of thing. And I was just curious. What did you mean by that? Do you mean like a cup of tea? Or does the does the phrase tea time travel? Because over here, in certain parts of the country, tea time means like your dinner. Like your tea is another word for your food, for your dinner. And I was really curious if that travelled to Canada and like you were asking about that. So is, is tea time when you have your dinner over in Canada? Um, as if you just mean you know, tea time, time to have a cup of tea. Um, Every time it's tea time, there's never a time that's not. But um, what, what I find interesting is also over here, like regionally, different people will have different tea times. So um, 
having tea as your dinner is quite a, it's quite northern. Um, so you'd have your tea at about 6, 7 p.m. and that's your evening meal. Whereas for me, I'd have my dinner. I wouldn't have tea. Right? We wouldn't call it that where we are. Um, and I would just genuinely be curious about what which of those are, which of those it is. Like, let's use this series as a way of learning about each other, about Canada and Britain, and do these which of these terms kind of travel and stuff. Because I always find that stuff fascinating. So yeah, what was uh, what did you mean by tea time? Did you mean um, dinner time? Um, which for me is about 8 p.m. something like that. Or did you mean time to have a cup of tea? Uh, I'd love to hear your thoughts on that one. <laughs> um, nice. Uh, I noticed you had your pop vinyl Frodo as well. He was good to see. Um, he's probably sort of on my on my list to try and pick up at some point. I think he's pretty cool. He's part of the new range, isn't he? That Frodo one, I think. Um, it's him and Sam. Um, but yeah, I'll try and uh, I'll try and pick him up at some point. Good to see. And you've got, um, you were chatting about the invisible Frodo model as well. Um, I've got him as well, the, the uh, Perspex one, which is, um, was it, was it Perspex? I, think, I don't know, clear acrylic, whatever it is. Um, he's a lovely, lovely model. Um, really happy with the paint job I did on him. Um, I don't have the footsteps model either. Um, to be brutally honest, I'm not particularly fussed about that. I know it's very rare in a collector's piece, but. Loads of people have done a like, knockoff version, I mean, it looks just as good, just put a few footsteps in the base, I don't really see the need for it myself. And um, you said only three to five fine cast models, so probably you want the people who's against fine cast, don't like the material I guess. Um, I can get on board with that, like, it's, you know, there's a lot of problems with it, a lot of miscast, but I have to admit, I've done two um, full armies with fine cast. I've done um, my Gundabad army and my... Uh, Mercury Elf Army, and I've got to say, it's a great material to work with. It's so easy to clean up and assemble um, in the actual act of it. That now, whether or not the models need more clean up and assembly because they're fine cast is another thing. So, the Gundabad Orcs are a nightmare for flash, really, really horrible for flash, but they're then great for converting. So, <sighs> I don't know, I'm, I'm sort of on the fence with it. I, I'd rather work with fine cast than metal. I think it's nicer to work with the metal, but ultimately I think if I had to choose, I'd rather have plastic. That um, would be my choice, personally. But I don't think it's as bad as people say. But um, they have just... Uh, I know it was Ben, I think, who was excited about the... Um, ben in, in his uh, video, who was excited about the new Lake Town bundles, and they're great, aren't they? Um, was that a third off? It's like uh, 40 pounds instead of 60 that's just brilliant work from GW to like kind of really slash those those costs for people you know, a lot of people put off late town by the by the cost and that and talk about listening to your audience so uh, yeah great work from GW on that and I think we'll see uh, even more late town armies jumping up now and hopefully as so many people have said We'll also see the similar thing done for the Gundabads and the Mercury Elves uh, before too long, because that would be really, really cool. Um, so yeah, I think um, I've inadvertently rambled on for too long. Um, I don't know, I can't actually see how long this is, but I think I might have passed the half hour mark now, um, which you know isn't a hard target, a hard problem, but uh, it's something we're trying to keep down to keep these relatively manageable. So I'm going to stop there and um, hand back over to uh, Taylor. I've got no idea if there's anything to talk about there, mate, or if I've just answered your questions or what, but uh, by all means, um, jump in and start some new topics. Um, I hope this has been of some use to you guys, to um, give you some meandering gibberish to listen to while you paint. That is the, uh, that is the idea. I've certainly enjoyed it. I've got a bit of a dry brushing done on the chariot, on the wood. I'm currently... Um, Working on the wheels at the moment, um, touching the metal up on the on the wheel sections, and uh, yeah, hopefully Taylor will be back um, within a few days. So make sure you keep your eyes on Blackfire Productions YouTube channel, um, and then I'll be back maybe in about a week or something, responding to whatever Taylor comes up with. So in the meantime, if you need more videos, check out Ontario Hobbit Adventures um, and their 
great stuff, check out the Ontario Strategy Battle Game League YouTube uh, page and check out um, Ben's thing, just remind you of Ben's um, Ben GB SBG uh, YouTube channel and there'll be some um, cool content on there for you to get stuck into but until next time, don't forget to comment, like, share and subscribe support your Hobbit host by clicking on the links below follow us on Twitter and like us on Facebook, support your Hobbit hobby happy strategy battle game and, and as they say in Blackfire Productions Ignite your hobby. As for Taylor, you also mentioned that I can say that very fast. Thank you very much. It's, it's one of my proudest achievements. And I can tell you the, the way to get it down to say it really fast is really simple. All you have to do is record about 5,000 videos and it becomes like muscle memory. See you next time.